Alright, well we're going to run through doing a quick hair strand uh, like these here, uh, similar to this side one and it'll probably follow the same pattern just around the side of the head here in front of the ear uh, and then the subsequent ones that follow will probably uh, be much uh, thicker strands uh, that'll be going over the ear, uh, possibly just to, most likely to hide it, sort of like what's going on over here. So the first thing we're going to do is make the surface live. Uh, basically that means that any time I click on this uh, anywhere uh, it's going to lock whatever object I'm moving to it. Um, so we'll go to create CV curve and we'll start plotting points down and that'll be a little bit hard to see. So I'm going to fire this into default texture mode, make it a bit easier to see. Uh, so we're going to start sort of in there and come out that's not a deal. Down to the side of the head. As few points as possible. That's, that's a bit much. So about four points is about right. Four or five points is <clears throat> sort of the decent range. And we'll switch over to our mouse mode. Select the control vertexes and we'll start. We'll go into invis mode and turn off that. And we'll start working with these a little bit. Uh, need to turn off live mode. And then this should now last to manipulate these freely without them being clipped to the head. And pull these down, make them a little more natural for the sake of time. I'm going to leave it just like that. Uh, I'm going to actually pull this one forward a little bit. And this one in. And this one in a little bit too. Right, so, <clears throat> so now that curve is created, we can go ahead and create a uh, create a platonic solid. Um, this is basically a mathematical uh, sphere uh, that we can create in Maya. Basically, it uh, allows us to do uh, lots of different uh, sorts of shapes. But the ultimate uh, return is that it's a sphere that has uh, custom geometry that allows for better manipulation. So I've been using these uh, octahedron uh, spheres uh, because I find they, they work the best. So we'll go to the edge mode, and we'll bevel that once, and then we'll go to face select mode, drag this side, ignoring the middle part. Uh, we'll go to our move tool. And we'll stretch that out a bit. Uh, stretch it out a bit more. And now that we're in the uh, still in edge select mode, we'll go to our multi cut tool. We'll do Control Shift and click, and just adding in geometry uh, to make sure that uh, what we do next uh, ends up looking correct. And then we'll go in here and go to object mode. Uh, next, we'll go to deform, and we're going to create a lattice deformer. Uh, these are basically, well, they're sort of self-explanatory. You can select a lattice point, and if you move it, the shape follows. Uh, but first things first, I'm going to go in here and change the S divisions and the U divisions. Uh, select it. S and U divisions to 3. Or S and T divisions, sorry, to 3. U division stays at 2. And then we'll go to lattice point, and we'll highlight, select, all of these, ensuring we don't get the back one. Nope, we didn't. And we'll use this handle up here to scale it out. And then we'll also select all of these. Making sure not to make any adjustments to the scale before we're ready. And now we have all of these selected bar the two center ones. We can do squash this down a little bit and bring it back a tiny bit. Okay, now we select the mesh, leaving the lattice deformer on, and shift click the hair strand curve, and we'll go up to deform and use curve warp. Now we get something like this to start with, but this is just the standard default um, the distribution for the curve warp. Uh, we're gonna untick keep length, that basically means that the, the mesh will always extend to the bottom of the curve. We will then 
rotate the hair follicle hair shape around a little bit seems good to me and we'll reduce the max scale say to 1.25 uh, we'll then up the curve to that oh and bring the bottom end down so that it comes into a point like so you reduce that max scale again somewhere like there and then we'll go around to the twist rotation and we'll add here and move this top half down so you can see the way the top half of this curve is created uh, it affects the top half of the curve and leaves the bottom half so we will make this so it has no influence and bring the top one up so it has maximum influence <clears throat> okay and uh, basically from there it's just a case of uh, customizing and uh, replacing these uh, curve points um, in order to do that we could go down here to the bottom or we can select the curve and you see the tiny highlight control vertices we go into x-ray mode we can see these pink dots that allow us to adjust where the strand is um, sort of in time and if you want to get fancy with that you can uh, that's why we only picked um, like why we only uh, used the five or six uh, curve points to begin with and that's just about it uh, we'll go back into our material mode and we'll add the material which is the light angle shader to it and hey presto we have a hair strand <laughs>